So we're joined by Bills offensive coordinator Joe Brady. Welcome on the podcast, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. How's the summer in Buffalo going? Ah, it's fantastic. It's uh, been beautiful weather out here. Been able to I got a 16 month old, so I've been able to go outside with him, and uh, he's just uh, loving life right now. Yeah, a little different than that Miami summer that you're used to growing up in, huh? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It's uh, it's interesting when it, when it's 80 degrees here, it feels like. Uh, you're, you're standing next to the sun. I'm not sure how I was able to play football and sports and live outside growing up, but uh, I'm enjoying it right now for sure. Summers in Buffalo are absolutely beautiful. You guys doing any summer coming up before uh, any traveling this summer before training camp? Or are you guys going to just stick around Buffalo? Yeah, my wife and I, we're actually going to Italy for eight days. Nice. Um, and so, yeah, we're excited. We'll go out there, I think, uh, you know, just after the fourth. Um, not sure exactly where we're going. What we're doing out there uh she you just, just letting her of, plan it every every time she does that it's that it's uh it's like a surprise party for me that you know the entire trip and so she did that with our wedding basically everything and it's she hasn't let me down she never probably will so uh i'm excited for it that's a good way of doing it all right let me let's start here you take over bill's play calling duties mid-year last year how tough is it to take over as play caller now you have offensive coordinator experience you've called plays but now you're calling them out of essentially someone else's playbook how difficult is that it's not the easiest but at the end of the day like i was a part of the system like right um you know i was a part of you know learning it and growing with it just being attached to the hip of doris and and uh and josh and so i wouldn't say it was the the toughest thing where it'd be completely different if i just kind of came into a new system and had to kind of figure it out on the fly like just watching the nhl hockey just seeing a head coach for the Oilers come in, you know, a week, a week into the season and just become a head coach. Like I couldn't imagine that, but you know, there was definitely some challenges with that. Um, but, uh, you know, when you got a guy like Josh Allen and, and the offensive staff that we had, you know, it wasn't as, as tough as it may seem. Yeah. And Edmonton had Connor McDavid. So that helps, that helps for them as well. And they, they get to the finals in his first year, but all right. So then you come back this off season and now you get to implement more of your, your twist on the offense, more of this Joe Brady offense. So how much different, was this playbook that the guys got this spring compared to maybe how you ended last season? I think some of that's still TBD, you know. Um, Look, at the end of the day, football, depending on, you know, uh, we all run the same plays, right? They just might be called differently. And, you know, the blocking schemes might be just taught a little differently or some of the routes and the depths and the the timing and the alignments. But at the end of the day, we all kind of run the same type of plays. To me, the biggest thing was about just cleaning up the detail you know, in the execution, you know, just making sure we're all on the same page, um, you know, with our splits and, you know, Josh's eyes and, you know, the ball carrier, knowing where he's going and how he's reading it. And so uh, less about the uh, actual plays and more about just the kind of how we're doing it and just cleaning that up. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right. So the Bills have some new receivers out there on the outside. A guy that you spent time with the Carolina, Curtis Samuel, comes in in free agency this year. What can Bills fans expect from Curtis Samuel? You know, hopefully a little bit of everything. So excited to get Curtis back. You know, I only had him for one year and uh, he kind of just did this the entire year. Um, the year. The one year that I had him, it was COVID year. So I didn't get to really do much with him in the offseason, didn't get anything. Met him for the first time in training camp. And so just kind of get a feel of what he can, what he can do. And, you know, we just basically played him at wide receiver to start, gave him some carries at running back. And then, you know, week two of my first year, Christian McCaffrey got hurt. And then it was just like, okay, you know, we had, we had good running backs, you know, in, on the, on the roster, but it was like, all right, how can I get this guy involved? And um, man, he just took and kind of ran with it, you know, is an incredible blocker can play on the outside, play on the inside, move him around as fast as it can be, just get the ball in his hands and good things happen. Um, whether he's playing receiver, whether he's playing running back, it doesn't really matter. It's just his versatility is, uh, you know, will, will be uh, will be an asset to offense. How did Keon Coleman look throughout OTAs? I know Bills fans are excited about him. Our top draft choice now, second rounder, but top draft choice of the Bills. People are excited about him. Uh, how do you look out there? He has the right mindset and the right approach and how he goes about it, right? And, you know, he'll have a, a couple routes that, hey, him and Josh just getting on the same page and seeing them, you know, they might miss on it in practice and then stay in after practice to kind of get after it and kind of feel Josh just as much on Keon of Josh trying to feel like how is Keon talking to him in the routes. And so it was fun to see just their growth together, you know, through the off uh, through the off season and OTAs and then just, you know, kind of continuing that this summer and into training camp and the more that they get a feel with each other. You know, Keon's going to naturally continue to grow into the offense and be able to do more as we kind of go. Um, but I was uh, I was pleased with his work ethic, his approach, his intelligence, being able to pick up what he can do. And then when the opp- had the opportunity to go up there and make a play, you know, that's what he was doing. So excited about, um, you know, the vision for him kind of as we go into this first year. 
Yeah, that's what it's all about. All right, we'll give a quick shout out to Prime, number one sports drink on the planet. Try their hydration packets. Those are perfect on the go this summer. All right, so you know, I got to ask about the offensive line. And to me, um, their, their athleticism, especially these last couple of years with Cromer coming in, all the different pulling schemes, the athleticism's been on display. Have you ever been around an offensive line as athletic as the one you got here in Buffalo? Not, not, not at all. Not at all. It's, it is such a, um, it's, it's my favorite room. I believe in offensive line. Your team will always go as your offensive line goes, in my opinion. Um, and we happen to have the best offensive line coach in the league and, uh, does such an incredible job of utilizing their athleticism and figuring out what those guys can do well and, and, and kind of go with it. And so I have so much joy running down on pregame and seeing them warm up and looking them in the eyes. And it's one of the things I miss about being on the sideline is being able to right before a drive, look at Dion and look at Connor and those guys. But um, man, I'm so excited about our offensive line. Yeah. When you mentioned that Cromer will, you know, utilize their strengths. That was one of my biggest observations when he came into the bills in 2015, I had two years under him and I, look, I brag on Cromer all the time, but I do feel like one of the things he does the best is that it's not a one size fits all approach to offensive line coaching. Okay. This guy, you know, he's, he's got a lot of size. He's got whatever he's got the anchor. Okay. He can vertical set. Well, other guys can't right. and, and, right. and that works. And I just feel like offensive line coaches can get himself in some troubles one time, just getting stuck in. Okay. This is how we teach it. Okay. Now bring in guys that can play this style of offensive line. I think Cromer does as good of a job as anybody as, uh, kind of molding his techniques to what your strengths are. And, uh, just love that dude. He's, he's an absolute trip. Um, where, where have you seen Josh working on his game? I saw a quote from him recently, and he said, you know, it's not the same mundane things on offense we've been doing for the last six years. My eyes got to be better. My footwork has to be better. And ultimately, the ball placement's got to be better. It's forcing me to be a better quarterback. So that's what he said. What are you seeing specifically on some of the things he's working on? The biggest thing is just continuing to master your our offense. You know, just seeing the – you can be in a system for so many years, you know, but are you still – you know, the little intricacies of it and just cleaning up his footwork and, you know, where his eyes need to be and how his feet can kind of talk him through progressions and talk him through reads. And Josh is, you know, is, is a great quarterback, but just seeing his thirst for wanting to get better. You know, when, when you show him clips that, hey, you might have made an incredible play right here, but you didn't have to make an incredible play. Like, you know, how can we make it easier for you? You're going to do, you can make plays that nobody else in this world can do, but we don't need you to do that every single snap. Right. Just trying to make the routine plays routinely and clean it up for him, trying to make life easier for him. And so uh, it was a big part of just seeing his communication with, you know, the skill group in and routes and just like, hey, guys, this is how I see it. You know, so really trying to just encourage him just to communicate more and, and speak to it, because, you know, uh, like you kind of just said with Aaron Cromer, like we might see a route a certain way, but the, every receiver might run it a little differently. And as long as Josh understands how those guys are running it and how the language that they're speaking to him running the routes and, and Dalton Kincaid's going to run it differently than Dawson Knox, and that's OK. But as long as they're communicating and their understanding of it, and he's kind of taking that leadership role um, in the communication elements of it to be able to, I think, elevate his game, you know, with with you know, in addition to the mechanics and, you know, the feet element to it. One thing I've always been fascinated with Josh is how he memorizes all of these handshakes with the different guys. Like how much time are they spending on this? I don't know. What I do know is, you know, if practice starts at one, it might actually start at one fifteen. Um, you know, it's, it's comical. I always look at, you know, coach McDermott, whenever we start, like, you know, start practice and we blow the horn to start and he's doing his handshakes and we're all just kind of sitting there kind of rolling with it. It's incredible because, you know, usually you're doing it with the starters and then, you know, on practice two, here comes this guy coming in there and he has a handshake with him and he kind of memorizes it. But uh, it kind of speaks to him as it is like he loves his teammates. He loves the guys he's with and he wants them to have fun and be included with it. And we go to routes on air with receivers and I, I understand that I might lose a minute and a half of it because he's doing his handshakes, getting the guys ready to go. But I think that's just as important as the football element to it. And so uh, whatever it takes for those guys to be excited and enjoy being out there with one another, I'm all for. Do you have a specific handshake with Josh? I don't. I probably am not, you on. I'm not coordinated enough to be able to kind of roll with it. Uh, but, uh, you know, we can work on that. We'll think about that. Let's take a quick second to hear from one of our sponsors, and that's Dano's Seasoning. Let Dano's help you take your meals to a Pro Bowl level. They have over 10 million fans nationwide. It's available in most retail stores. We'll put a link to purchase online in the show notes. Go out and get you some today.
when you took over as OC, we kind of saw different approaches within games where you're not married to a specific, I don't want to say system, but a specific philosophy. Okay, Dallas, you just run the ball down their throat over and over. Much of the time, it's a lot more balanced. Dow- uh, the Miami game at the end of the year, Josh throws for almost 360 yards. As an offensive coordinator, and I, and I know you want to stay balanced and you want to win the game, and I get all that, but do you take more pride in your offense being able to just simply run the ball down someone's throat or throw it all over the yard on them. What was fun about some of the elements of last year and things that you want to grow on is that if you can, as an offense, if you can find different ways to win, I think it makes it real tough on defenses. I think there's a fine line, a difference in personality and identity. What I mean by that is you don't want to just sit there and just say, hey, we're going to just throw it every single play and, you know, there's not going to be a toughness element or, a you know, we're going to find different ways to win and we're going to find what the what we think are our strengths going against that opposing defense and we want to be able to be proactive with it not reactive you know to what they're doing but if we can find that hey the only way that we can win is by running the football every week well eventually teams are going to be able to say hey we're going to load the box and do that or if we think hey we're going to throw it um the only way we can win football games is by throwing it 50 times well eventually teams are going to know i'm um, you know play shell defense and make you have to throw outlets and it's going to become tough especially as season goes on and more you know and more games on tape and so to me i think it's important for an identity is to to get understand what we're good at but if we can find different ways to win football games to score one more point than them i think will be a lot harder to defend um and that was something that i was encouraged um you know with the way the season kind of uh, took a turn towards the end of last year and Hopefully we continue to grow in that and saying, hey, guys, whether if we have to run it 50 times this game or if we have to throw it 50 times, whatever we got to do that we feel puts us in the best position to win this football game, you know, I think we're going to be uh, ready for it. So you can't cop out, uh, cop out on this answer. Bobby Babbage gave me one last week, and he said Ben Johnson was his hardest offensive coordinator uh, to prepare for as a defensive coordinator. When you're looking at the opposing defenses throughout the week who is the hardest defensive coordinator in your mind in the NFL right now to prepare against I think there's a a big difference in terms of there's some schemes that are very simple in scheme but have are so sound and so uh and have such great players that it makes it an oftentimes harder defense to go against than it is teams that do a lot sometimes teams that do a lot don't necessarily have an identity besides doing a lot that it might, it might not be sound. It might make it hard on us at times, um, but it actually ends up being easier. No matter how many times you go against them, you know, the New England Patriot tree will always be tough because they're always going to try to make you play left-handed a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. They're gonna, you're always going to have to make adjustments. Um, I think Steve Spagnola is one of the best in the business. Um, you know, I think Lou Anamar, I mean, you can go on and on. Robert Sala and, and, and our, uh, you know, and Jeff Ulbrich, like they do such a great job in how simple they do, but their tape and how just the silent tape, it just pops at how good that they play and how sound they are. So completely different defenses, but with, with what they do, but man, they make it so challenging on, on offenses to be sound, understand where your eyes are. Are you going to get greedy? Are you going to be able to be patient? All right. Hey, when the chance is there, can you take it? Know where your issues are with blitzes? Like um, it puts a lot of stress on us and, um, and that's why they are the best of the best. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think back to, you know, we'd prepare for a Sean McDermott Carolina defense and they weren't super multiple, but their linebackers were so fast and could get downhill so quickly. They recognized everything so fast because they weren't very multiple that it made it harder for us to even sometimes call basic plays because you're like, well, Luke Keekley's going to shoot the gap. If we if I run <clears throat> towards a three technique on a wide zone. There's a 50-50 shot. It's a three-yard loss because he can go right behind me. And so, exactly. and, and then you prepare for a, a Rex Ryan defense, and it takes you three hours to do the third down protection schemes. But maybe their guys aren't playing quite as fast out there because they're so multiple. So, yeah, that, that all makes great sense to me. All right. So, I got to know this. What's with the William & Mary uh, coaching tree in the NFL? Are you guys just, like, looking out for each other? And so, you give opportunities to other William & Mary guys. Is there something to it? That's a great question. Maybe we're just all we weren't good enough to like you to play in the NFL or play, you know, big time football. And so uh, um, but we have a, you know, a deep passion for this game and being around it. And, uh, you know, despite the education and despite probably what your parents are, you know, hoping you're utilizing your William & Mary education for um, initially, at least, um, you know, you're just around football. And um, it is a uh, 
it's it's a small college, um, but we're very proud of where we come from. And so naturally, I was a college player watching, you know, Mike Tomlin coaching the Super Bowl. You know, I was, you know, Coach Coach McDermott's the defense coordinator in Carolina coming to speak at an alumni event. And I'm just sitting there thinking that's the coolest thing in the world. Like these guys are doing what I want to do. Um, and so uh, um, every year there's more and more guys that kind of enter, whether it's personnel or coaching. But we all have a passion for football and we've all walked the same steps. And so I think it's uh, uh, just we're fortunate. To, I'm fortunate that I get to work with one and work with others, work for and work with others here. But um, it's a special place. Yeah. Yeah. There's something to it. There's definitely something to it. All right. Last one for me. I was told to ask you about Moxie Cola. I've never heard of Moxie Cola. I have no idea what it is, but I was told to ask you about it. And he didn't want to spoil any type of info on it because uh, he felt like that would ruin my reaction. Staring at you, you know, All right, so, so now you, got, you got one in the office. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's all, it literally just points at me. Um, so this, uh, you know, it's there's really not much to it other than when I was a GA at Penn State, Joe Moorhead, um, you know, was one of the best and, you know, still is. And, you know, he he brought up Moxie and, you know, you coaches, we come in on you know the day after the games and it's like, oh, my gosh, how are we going to pick up this, you know, uh, Rex Ryan defense this week? Like, oh, my gosh, you're watching the tape and the Moxie right now. It's starting really low, like, you know, but as the week kind of goes, you know, you go through your blitz meeting and we're like, all right, we got it. We're figured it out. And the moxie gets high and on game day, moxie's through the roof. And so, um, you know, I kind of brought it from Penn State when I went to New Orleans, you know, in our game plan meetings, I sat next to our O-line coach. And sometimes, you know, it's like, how are we going to block all these guys? And I'd sit there and I'd point the I'd point the moxie can, you know, right at them and be like, hey, you need a little moxie right now. And so I bring it with me on the road. Um, it's always like a little, just subtle reminder that like, we're going to be good to go. Like, uh, they're going to go as I go. And as long as I kind of bring that, that mindset and bring that personality that would be good. And I bring it in the booth with me. I'm not going to lie. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. And so, uh, I usually have a can a year. It, it takes its bumps, its bruises, and, uh, sometimes, uh, it opens and it gets everywhere. But, uh, yeah, that's my thing. My moxie. Where can you buy moxie cola? It's it's definitely in the Northeast. You can find it online for sure. I bought a case when I was in New Orleans and when I brought it to LSU. And uh, I'll never forget, I when I took the job in Carolina, I had my, my moxie can from our national championship year. And, you know, uh, it was on my desk. And one of the cleaning ladies at night, I guess, thought it was an unopened can and ended up throwing it away. And uh, so uh, don't have my can from that year. But uh, generally speaking, I try to kind of keep the cans from year to year. I have our you know, from, you know, when we won the Rose Bowl at Penn State, you know, those cans and stuff. So it's a dumb thing, but uh, I'm excited about it. It's it's my little thing. And uh, I, on game day, I definitely have the moxie. Oh, that's really cool. Joe, I can't thank you enough for your time. Hope you have an awesome trip with your wife to Italy. Enjoy the summer and looking forward to a bunch of points on the scoreboard for the Bills this year. I appreciate you.